Salutations everyone, this is Razor giving you guys a video about everyone's favorite cyber ninja, Genji. And he, he's been, you know, a hot topic for a while. The dude, uh, he, he was and still is, I feel, a must pick in this game. Just the damage output, the speed, how hard he is to kill, that insane ult, uh, the, the ability to reflect everything in the game. Yeah, you always saw Genji. Didn't matter if you're playing quick play or competitive, you would see at the very least one Genji, you know, when the game mode uh, would allow that to happen. And th there are reasons for that, and I think that definitely um, showed in how they nerfed Genji. Now, uh, every everybody hates it when the thing that they use gets nerfed. Doesn't matter how overpowered or unbalanced or broken something is, People don't like change when that change negatively affects, in particular, them. And Genji, the same way, you know, people have people were complaining about the Genji nerf before it even happened, before it was even in the public test realm. So what happened to Genji? So his double jump no longer resets when wall climbing. So you can't just jump forever, especially on an objective, and uh, just become impossible to kill. His dash no longer deals damage to traps, like Widowmaker's Venom Mine or Junkrat Steel Trap. No longer bypasses Junkrat Steel Trap. Uh, Swift Strike no longer interrupts quick melee attacks, so you can't get a free melee before using Swift Strike. And his ult has been reduced from 8 seconds to 6 seconds. And those are all very reasonable nerfs uh, to the character, but it doesn't change the character at all. It doesn't change how he plays, it doesn't change his damage output, it doesn't change his speed, it doesn't It doesn't really change the character. You're not gonna... No one says, or no one in their right mind would say like, oh, Genji isn't good now, or Genji isn't still amazing, because he's still super fast. He can't jump on a wall at infinitum, and his Dragon Strike loses two seconds, but his ult was incredibly strong. It was way too strong. And the fact that it lasted 8 seconds, I mean, you would see every play of the game was a Genji. You thought, you know, Torbjorn or Bastion had it easy, or, you know, a McCree Deadeye, which I think we're seeing a little less of. Uh, Genjis were just taking it up. You just press the white button and they get play of the game. And I, I should have gotten it in this game, but I don't. It's weird. So, um, and this is, this is pre-patch uh, Genji here, by the way just uh, so you guys could relive the old days of back when Genji was amazing. He's, he's still amazing. His, his his attack power is incredible. He's so fast and so freaking jumpy that he's so hard to hit. Uh, Genji is an absolute must. He's, and he's so hard counters a lot of characters. You know, back in the alpha and the beta, people were like, ah, Bastion's terrible. And, you know, Blizzard would tweet at you, use Genji, because he can reflect at him. And that's, that is true. He also, I think, annihilates snipers. He kills his brother Hanzo because Hanzo can't do anything up close. Genji just closes the gap, maybe reflects an arrow, doesn't even have to hit him. He just throw a couple of shurikens, swift strike, and he's gone because, you know, Hanzo's super weak. And same with Widowmaker. I feel like Genji just uh, eliminates certain characters on the enemy team like they don't even exist. If there's a Hanzo on one team and a Genji on the other team, that Hanzo basically might as well not even be in the game. Same with Widowmaker. Uh, same if you're, say, like a Mercy and your team isn't protecting you properly. I've gone over what I thought of, you know, how people should handle uh, Mercy. Um, but, you know, Genji can keep up with Tracer because that Swift Strike does so much damage, covers so much range, uh, and he does so much so quickly um, that, you know, Tracer's blink powers don't help her a ton. And he, you know, can he can slice through so many things, and that's not to say that that's bad or or good inherently. But like, say his reflect, as you can see there, I can reflect Reinhardt's uh, strike, and he the fact that he can reflect so many things that shouldn't be reflectable, like ults. I don't think Genji should be able to reflect ults. That's a little crazy. That's a little unbalanced, if you ask me, because no one else can do anything like that. I mean, sure, you can have like a Roadhog chain hook that you can interrupt an ult and, you know, make it not possible, but that doesn't use the ult against you. Say, you know, uh, a Barrage or a Deadeye 
or uh, you know a Hanzo arrow if you're close enough to actually you know hit the arrow because you know he can't exactly reflect the dragons. You know this isn't uh, you know that cutscene that was really cool, but the fact that he can reflect ults is just is just. I, I feel like that's broken on onset. Like, in theory, that shouldn't be a thing that you can do. And the fact that his ult is so strong, there's nothing really that you can do to stop his ult. I mean, sure, you could tranquilize him with Ana, or, uh, you know, push him off, you know, if he's close enough to the stage. But there's there's nothing... It's not like he can miss with his, you know, his strike. He's not more vulnerable when he's using his ults like other characters. Um, it makes him faster, and it makes him deal more damage, and he will, you know, two-shot, two-slice, I should say, people, uh, pretty much everybody on the entire roster. And he's incredibly strong. He puts out so much damage, uh, it is ridiculous. So, I felt that a balance was needed, um, and I don't know, you know, if they went far enough. Obviously, I think the big things uh, was, his in was the ability for him to jump on a wall forever in a day. That was really crazy, especially in certain objective areas where he could just jump and climb and, you know, ignore everybody and still be on the objective, you know, better than Lucio, you know, just jumping around the escort over and over again. I'm sure we've all had those cases, but he's very fast, puts out a lot of damage. Sure, he only has 200 health, but he's, uh, you know, he might not be as slippery as, say, Tracer. But the fact that he eliminates snipers from being on the other team, he could, you could just take out Mercy with that swift strike, you know, get behind the tank or whatever is protecting her. Um, I mean, he, sh he still should be a strong character. He is offense, so he should be offensive. He should output more damage than most characters. Um, it's nice that he has that reflex to counter certain things, and also the fact that his shurikens do not lose uh, damage over range as much as others, so that makes him really good at taking out, say, Torbjorn turrets, or a sniper that's stationary, or really anybody that's stationary. Uh, you know, say, like a Reinhardt that's facing the opposite direction. The fact that he can just climb over everything in the world and get behind everybody and just dragon strike is is crazy powerful and not to say that ults or you know situations like that shouldn't play in their favor we've all seen uh, a reaper teleport and then drop his death blossom on us real quick and as you can see there's the eight second ult uh getting that slice and dice achievement right there but uh it's he, w he was he was too strong and maybe he still is he's definitely one of the strongest characters in the game He's a must pick because of what he does. He can eliminate a McCree from being on the other team. He can eliminate a Hanzo, a Widowmaker, uh, a Mercy, or, or even a Tracer. It's like they almost aren't in the game anymore because of what Genji can do. And the fact that he can, you know, reflect ults and, you know, climb on walls uh, for crazy uh, periods of time and at such speeds uh, makes him a must pick in every situation on every map. Now, sure, there are some characters where it's like, you know, you, maybe you always want a Lucio on your team, or maybe you always want a Reinhardt on your team, just because of what they're capable of doing, and they, they fully fit their roles uh, very, very well. But uh, Genji would just put out so much damage, be so hard to kill, and do crazy things that nobody else can do and that nobody else can counter, and the fact that he counters so many things. You know, there's he doesn't have a bad matchup, you know, in, in fighting game terms, and somehow this Reinhardt gets played again instead of my ult, but, you know, it's whatever. He, he hammers down like, like a good Reinhardt can do. And, but actually, it's flashbang right there, but, I mean, got them all clustered up, so, you know. Can't, can't fault a Reinhardt for getting a quad getting a play of the game. I think that's more impressive than the Genji ult play of the games that we see every single game. So, yeah, he's strong. Uh, he was more annoying and broken, but now he's now things uh, don't happen to him that should have happened to him uh, in the past. But he's still strong. It might be a must pick and might still be the best character in the game. It is, it's quite feasible.